I recently upgraded my main Mac device to the latest Mac OS 15 Sequoia that's currently in beta. This exact video is being recorded and edited on the same Mac and the results I found are kind of interesting. So if you're thinking of upgrading your device to Mac OS 15 Sequoia, then this is the video for you. First thing you need to know when it comes to this new update, Mac OS 15 Sequoia, is if your device is even going to be supported if you are thinking of updating. You can see here, unlike last year's Mac OS 4, Sonoma that dropped support for three devices. This year's Mac OS 15 drops support for two devices which are the 2018 and 2019 MacBook Airs. The release date for Mac OS 15 you can see Apple says it's coming later this fall. From what we've seen similarly in the past like for example Mac OS 13 Ventura came out on October 24th and then last year's Mac OS 14 Sonoma came out on September 26th. So when it comes to this year's Mac OS 15, you can expect the four that's being referred to here as somewhere between late September to late October. The big question now is, should you be updating your Mac device to the latest Mac OS 15 Sequoia? Well, for once, if you are a programmer, a developer, a systems admin, and you need to test your systems or software in beta before they come out officially, and then you really don't have much of a choice because you need to make sure that they work before for their official release to the public. Otherwise, it might be a big inconvenience when the software is officially released. But how about for the rest of us, different users and Mac enthusiasts that wanna try out the latest and greatest software that Apple has to offer? Are there any new features and changes within this new update that are worth updating for? Or are there any issues that might hinder you from upgrading? Unlike the previous versions of Mac OS that we've seen in the past, this year's version is kind of different because with Mac OS 15 Sequoia, it's actually built around Apple intelligence. It's meant to be integrated within your different devices to help you with your daily task. And it's also going to be integrated with ChatGPT and Siri. And at the same time, you can see the different devices that are going to be supported here when it comes to Apple intelligence. So for the iPhone, you need a 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max. And then for the Mac, devices you need an m1 and later mac whether it's a macbook a macbook pro and for the mac pro you need an m2 ultra and later the problem here is that apple intelligence is actually not yet implemented in the beta of mac os 15 sequoia that i'm testing right now and even if you have a supported device this will initially be available in us english so your language origin might not be initially supported if this is one of the things that pushing you to update to Mac OS 15. Another big change that was announced with Mac OS Sequoia is continuity by means of iPhone mirroring that will be able to allow you to access your iPhone anytime using your Mac and you'll be able to interact with its apps wirelessly while using your Mac's keyboard and trackpad. The strange thing about this new iPhone mirroring feature is that it's actually nowhere to be found in the different applications of Mac OS 15. In fact, for you to be able to find it, you have to search for iPhone mirroring in Finder and then that's when this application that you see here is going to be showing up and you can see the path right here and you can click on it it won't open and at the same time you can pin it to your dock and try and open it but at the time I'm recording this video when it comes to Mac OS 15 Sequoia betas it hasn't yet been implemented in Mac OS so if it's one of the new features that you want to update for well it's not yet working as of now. Something that's new and unique that is working is a new passwords application that's now here in Mac OS 15. When you open it, you will see all your different passwords and accounts and it will be able to use autofill. At the same time, you can use it for your different Wi-Fi's that you have, your different generated codes, your pass keys, and if you have any security concerns or for different old websites and accounts that you don't use, you'll be able to go into this section and see what the concern is and at the same time if you want to share a certain password to an account you can go on the plus icon and this will give you 
the ability to be able to use shared passwords and pass keys even though this is available on mac os if you use icloud for windows you will still be able to access it on your windows device using icloud for windows another thing that is working here on mac os 15 is window tiling which is a new feature that's meant to be able to help you with your different tiling options so in the move and resize option right here you can see apple has added more different options you can fill you can arrange and if you want to have four different windows as you can see here tiled together then you also have the ability to do that and at the same time if you have different keyboard shortcuts that you want to use with your tiling you can always use those on mac os 15. facetime also gets a new update you can see here you have an option for backgrounds that you can access you can switch it on or you can switch it off and if you click on the image right here you can see the different background colors that you can choose from i think this black looks better but at the same time like apple showed off you see they have different presets wallpapers and backgrounds that you can choose from at this present time there's only one wallpaper available but if you want to upload your own images and be able to show standout features or images of different backgrounds as backgrounds you can also upload those in facetime a pretty cool update in messages is that you now have the ability to do different effects such as both through italics underline and strike through and at the same time you have different message effects if you want to send with a big effect shake node explore repo or jira you have all those options but at the same time if you click on the plus icon right here and go to where it says message effects you can see the same ones that were on ios and ipad have been brought over so if you want to send lasers or you want to send a certain celebration or even fireworks you have different options and if you click on the x right here and click on the plus you have an option to schedule messages or send later so if you click there you get this option here that allows you to be able to change the date and after you've done that you can change the hour and the exact minute and then your message will be scheduled to be sent at that exact moment so those are working features but now how about some of the issues or bugs that i've experienced when it comes to this mac os 15. the first one is more of a recalculation of the battery health maximum capacity so before updating my maximum health capacity was on 96 percent and after updating it dropped to 94 percent this is not necessarily a bug or an issue but it just goes to show that there might be a recalculation of your battery health maximum capacity and being in beta isn't definitely going to help your case another issue that i've noticed with mac with sequoia especially when it comes to third-party applications is that sometimes when you try and open different applications for the first time after updating there's sort of this delay where the application is in jiggle mode and that goes on for almost a minute for most third-party applications well at least the ones that i use on a daily and then after some time it gets used to it and it opens up faster so this is something that you might need to be aware of it's always good practice after updating your device to any update to go to the application section and see if there's existing updates that you might want to do and at the same time check your system preferences and see if there is any video codecs that have been updated alongside the new update that you are putting your device to if you use airdrop to send files from your iphone that's on ios 18 to your mac on mac os 15 i noticed that sometimes files may get stuck during the sending process and you might need to restart or redo them again from time to time but at the same time on mac os 15 the image capture application that we have if you connect your iphone then you are still able to port over the photos or videos or different files that you might want to do and this is just a small workaround on mac os 15 sequoia this is the current state of my xcode application this version isn't supported on this version of mac os and i had to do different alternative means to get it to work if you use an external monitor with mac os 15 sequoia i noticed that from time to time there may be issues with the display where it might do like glitch artifacts in my case that only happened once since i've been using mac os 15 sequoia final cut pro also seems to be experiencing issues for different users you can and see here my friend tech height was experiencing issues when it comes to specifically exporting videos and we were able to find the workaround but at the same time if you use your mac on a daily to export and 
be productive when it comes to Final Cut Pro, it might be an issue in your situation. Meeting and video sharing applications such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams might have issues when you are trying to share a browser or a certain window within Mac OS 15. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, this actually surprised me how stable or how minor these issues are compared to previous versions of Mac OS like Mac OS Big Sur. That was, was a nightmare. There's actually a Reddit thread that's out there praising Mac OS 15 Sequoia for having such minor issues to almost none at all. It seems to be pretty solid and well built for such an early beta but at the same time this isn't an automatic guarantee that for the specific tasks or applications and softwares that you use your device for will work or be optimized at this present time. So a lot of people adopt the wait and see approach whereby they wait for Mac OS 15 sequoia to come out officially and even a large number of people wait for the first point update because right now it's in beta only developer beta testers are able to give feedback to apple to let them know of the current existing issues but once the first version of mac os 15 sequoia goes out there's more people that update but then with those updates there's more people that report issues on the official version of mac os 15 and then there is mac os 15.1 which is the first point update that most people at least wait for in order to use the update without many of the hiccups so that's mac os 15 sequoia for you i will continuously be testing mac os 15 here on the channel during its beta stages until it's officially released and some of these new big features like the apple intelligence or iphone mirroring that are not working once they work perhaps i'll do a video on it but that's about it for me. If you like this video, leave a like and comment what's your favorite feature when it comes to Mac OS 15 Sequoia. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.